One of the tasks that every single electric vehicle driver will come up against is taking their car on a long trip for business or holiday purposes. The question is therefore, where do you charge up your car when you get to your destination? I'm Anthony and I'll be taking my uh, Tesla on a short uh, holiday out to the Northwest Highlands and I'll be searching for answers to this question. So I'm now loaded up and we are going to be heading to a cottage uh, at Loch Broom which is on the other side of the loch to uh, Ullapool. So uh, the battery is uh, predicted to be 44% uh, when, we, uh, 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 when we arrive at uh, the uh, cottage so uh, let's be on our way. Okay, well, uh, we're now on the main road and uh, we're going to be um, dealing with gale force winds on, all the way up. So I am going to be very keen to see whether the predicted battery remaining actually matches up with um, the uh, uh, actual uh, state of affairs. Um, it's uh, been uh, 50 to 60 mile an hour gusts uh, in Aberdeenshire and um, uh, as you probably saw in my intro, uh, my car was absolutely covered in uh, large pine needles. Um, that's uh, the tree I've got just over the fence from where I live and uh, it always covers my house at this time of the year. Okay, so we are approaching the summit of the Glens of Foudland and uh, this is the high point on the drive to uh, our Loch Broom. And um, yeah, I just wanted to talk about how this car feels in the wind. Uh, everyone knows that battery cars are much heavier cars than uh, petrol or diesel cars. Uh, this is just under two tons. It's about 1,800 kilos. Um, and it feels pretty uh, steady in the wind. It, it doesn't uh, get buffeted all that much. Um, and um, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely a, a, a good car for, uh, for um, stormy weather. So we are now uh, approaching the uh, Keswick Bridge and uh, the weather has been uh, fairly windy but the uh, uh, power consumption what we've had uh, has been uh, much worse than it was uh, when we were going to Torridon. So when I went to Torridon back in September, we were consuming 240 watt hours per mile, um, whereas this time we're consuming about 260 watt hours per mile. Um, so we haven't had the full exposure of the gale force winds um, just due to uh, trees, uh, but the battery now is at 59%. So um, I do think we're gonna be a bit below the 44% uh, that was predicted at the start of the journey. So we're coming up to Glasscarnock Dam and this is where the road climbs up and then uh, drives across uh, a pretty empty uh, moorland. Um, so we are now at 45% battery and uh, we've still got uh, 19 miles of uh, driving to go. So um, given the predicted uh, uh, battery was 44%, one of the things I can confidently say is that um, the uh, battery gasometer, for want of a better term, does not take uh, prevailing weather into account. So here we are uh, above, uh, uh, next to Loch Glasscarnock. You can see it's uh, a very windy day with uh, lots of breaking waves over the loch. Um, so we will uh, 
carry on. Uh, we're now on the highest point of the uh, the road to Ullapool on the A835 and uh, we've now got uh, uh, Anchelak uh, up ahead. Um, it's a nice uh, uh, day to be driving, it's quite scenic um, and the roads are uh, really very nice and quiet which is uh, an attractive uh, feature of uh, this uh, of taking a holiday at this time of the year um, of course you're really rolling the dice with the weather um, but uh, it's um, it's uh, I think it's a dice worth rolling um, uh, definitely uh, we'll be uh, doing Cory Shallot Gorge uh, uh, before getting to our final destination so here we are Cory Shallot Gorge on the suspension bridge Look around here, look all the way down, and that's a long way down. Right, that's it. And here's the um, footbridge we just crossed from a, 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 from a different vantage point, and uh, here you can see the gorge going all the way down. It's definitely uh, a worthwhile tourist attraction to visit around here. So uh, we come off the main road now and uh, we um, are nearly at Loch Broom and uh, before we get there um, we, we turn off onto this uh, side road here and then, and then we've got uh, four miles along this road to get to uh, where we want to be. So I've never driven down this road before. We are now coming up to the place where our cottage is uh, uh, supposed to be. My, my cottage is actually on the map, uh, shown as the bend, so in theory it should just be a, a sharp right turn just down here and we should see it. And ooh, not too sure where to go. Oh, the Riroy bungalows over this way and just to the left here. Pretty sharp turns. Here we are. There we go. Right, time to get the uh, car charged up. This cottage is very typical of many uh, cottages which you can uh, rent for holiday. It's got electricity and it's got parking uh, very close to the uh, cottage. So even though there is no dedicated EV charger, we've still got options. So in this case, I plug my car in and over here, I've just simply run a cable in uh, through the window. This isn't an ideal arrangement but it will give us all the miles that we need for this holiday. So in this instance we do have permission to charge our car but I'd say it's always good manners to ask for permission to charge your car before you make your booking for your holiday. Now other accommodation isn't so well catered for. You might find that parking is well away from your building so an extension lead wouldn't be long enough to get to the nearest socket. In this instance, you're gonna to have to rely on uh, roadside chargers. In our case, we've got roadside chargers here in Ullapool. We've got Loch Inver, uh, Scourie, Durness, and Pool Yui uh, to choose from. In this instance, both of these are available, but um, not all the time. And you have to ask the question, are you taking time out in order to uh, charge your car? Or does this uh, fit in naturally uh, with your itinerary? In our case, we're in Ullapool. I don't need to charge up because I had a, a full charge uh, yesterday at the cottage. So this is a situation that many EV drivers are going to be facing and prior homework before your travels is going to mitigate the situation where you're going to have to rely on this. Both Visit Scotland and Sykes Cottages have got options for searching for accommodation uh, that have EV chargers available. Booking.com doesn't seem to however but in the instances where there are 
uh, available filters for uh, searching for accommodation. What I found was that the amount of accommodation that had a charger available uh, was very small indeed. So you have to do improvisations like what we did uh, in our cottage. Our cottage wasn't listed with a charger. So the issue of uh, charging up whilst on holiday is going to become increasingly prominent. We've got a ban on petrol and diesel car sales in 2030, but it, long before then, over 15% of all new car sales uh, in September were battery electric vehicles. But at the moment, businesses don't have any incentive to um, invest in electric vehicle chargers. That, however, is soon going to change. In April 2022, next year, uh, the grant for uh, electric vehicle charging uh, at home with a private driveway are going to end. Instead, what we're going to have is an expansion of the workplace charging scheme. At the moment, with the workplace charging scheme, businesses can claim uh, £350 per socket, but only if uh, they have employees or fleets uh, which are electric vehicles on their premises. What's going to change is that um, the workplace charging scheme is going to expand to include a small accommodation providers. That includes cottages and it includes any VAT registered business with less than three, 250 employees. They will be able to claim a grant of £350 per socket up to a maximum of 40 sockets or £14,000. Now, with some planning, it should be possible to cover your entire installation costs with a scale of 40 sockets. That's going to be a very attractive proposition for a number of businesses. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's, not, it's, it's VAT registered businesses which can apply for it. It's also registered charities. And one charity in particular I'm thinking of is the Scottish Youth Hostels Association. In two years time, I think the provision of electric chargers uh, whilst out on holiday is going to be a very different proposition to what it is right now. You're gonna to have to improvise now, there's no doubt about it. Um, but I think it's going to become something you don't have to think about too hard in, in a couple of years' time. So, uh, we are approaching Elfin now. Uh, it's the next day since my uh, uh, previous uh, video. And um, uh, yesterday we did about nearly 100 miles of driving. And the point to raise was that after each uh, drive, um, on a three pin socket, we were able to fully recharge the car each time. And 100 miles of driving is, is uh, quite ambitious. Uh, today we're heading off to um, Stowe Lighthouse, so it's an even bigger drive. It's about 120 miles of uh, driving today. Um, and uh, the point is, is that um, even that drive will be, uh, uh, will we'll have the charger fully re replenished. Um, and one thing to note about this, uh, this drive is, uh, this is uh, part of the North Coast 500 route. Um, doing it in November time, you get much quieter roads. And uh, I think, arguably, the scenery is uh, much uh, more spectacular looking at this time of the year. So we are approaching Stoa Lighthouse. And this road, it's only 10 miles along from uh, Loch Inver, but uh, it does take a long time to drive along here. It's um, it, it, it's uh, pretty uh, it's pretty twisty road, um, and the last section of the road in particular is uh, uh, especially twisty. Um, but uh, it's a very um, wild day, shall we say? The the wind's definitely howling, and uh, the there it is. There's Stowe Lighthouse. Um, so we're going to go out to the uh, the old man of Stoa and uh, enjoy some uh, some wild walking along uh, what seems to be a, a fairly unforgiving uh, a bit of coast. Uh, seas are definitely what I would describe as being uh, moderate or rough uh, today. Right here we are. Um, let's find a car parking space. 
and uh, get my hiking boots on. And here we have uh, the old man of uh, Stoa. Um, it looks a lot smaller than what I imagined it to be. Um, I'm probably uh, mixing up with the old man of Hoy. Um, we're going to get a bit closer to it and uh, let's uh, see whether, we, whether this is the best view or not. Well, here we are, much closer to the old man of uh, Stoa. And uh, as you can see, it's actually quite an impressive size. It's uh, a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. So on the way back from uh, the Stoa and the Stoa Lighthouse, uh, we get to a place south of Inchna Damp. And uh, we've got a long walk in this valley here. And uh, this valley leads to what's known as the, uh, the, the bone caves. And uh, here we have one such example. And in these bone caves were found uh, bones of prehistoric animals. Um, there was a skull uh, discovered in the 1890s of a polar bear in here. And that now resides in the National Museum of Scotland. So let's uh, go and take a look inside. Um, unfortunately, I don't have my head torch, so you, we can't see too much. But uh, the main entrance to these caves is quite shallow and uh, you've got a narrow fissure right at the end. Um, so it's quite dry in here. And then we'll uh, just uh, take a look on the outside. And there we go. Very nice. So we'll uh, continue down the valley. Uh, there's some other interesting features involving uh, uh, springs and uh, the river. So I'll just show you that in a moment. So what we have here is a curious uh, phenomenon. We've got a trickle uh, here and it ends up in this uh, pool. And the outflow from that pool is a substantial uh, uh, stream. And uh, what you see, if you look a bit more closely, we have uh, these springs. And uh, if we just have a look here, you can see we've got uh, water bubbling up there and uh, you can just see some uh, small little uh, uh, holes amongst the shale where the, uh, where the water is coming up from. But uh, I, I've spotted about uh, uh, five of these uh, springs and there must be more because the, the overall flux of water coming out from each of these gaps looks uh, really quite small. But the, uh, the volume of water coming out here is uh, quite substantial. So it's, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, this is a uh, limestone country, so you get underground rivers around here. Uh, right, so time to get back to the, uh, to the car. So we're on our way home, and uh, since we haven't got too far to drive, uh, we've got some time to afford for a little mountain to climb. So we're on the top of a little corbett called uh, Little Wivis, and uh, it's a four hour walk. And um, we'll be, uh, by the time we get home, this evening, um, we will have done nearly uh, 600 miles for this uh, this whole journey. And we've not had to rely on roadside charges uh, at all. Um, so that's, uh, that's a good thing. And uh, that means we've not had to take any time out of our itinerary in order to accommodate uh, electric car charging whatsoever. Well, here I am back home and uh, it uh, has overall been uh, about uh, 255 watt hours per mile uh, getting back from Ullapur to here. Um, slight headwind and uh, cold temperatures uh, does, doesn't help the, uh, the uh, efficiency uh, as well as it should. The end takeaway, of course, therefore, is um, there's nothing to be afraid of when it comes to taking your Tesla on holiday. Um, so long, as, so long as you've done your homework uh, in terms of figuring out uh, where you can get a charge up from, uh, then you're going to be pretty good. If you don't have the luxury, um, then you've got some more work to do. Um, but uh, you never, I, I don't think you'll ever find yourself in a situation where you're going to get stranded. I'm going to have a, uh, another video coming out in just a few days time. This is going to be all about uh, my uh, solar panel array and living with it for the last year. 
Um, I hope you uh, stay tuned for that one. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, thank you for watching and I'll talk to you later.